Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Kelly. We're in section four now, the volume of prisms and cylinders. And you guys know what volume is, right? Volume is how much space there is on the inside of an object if we were to fill it up. Most people use like popcorn as an example or fill it up with water. That's a, that's a classic calculus problem. We're filling up a container with water and it's probably leaking or something, but we're not gonna do anything that crazy. What we're gonna do is just calculate the amount of space that an object occupies. That's the volume. Now, I'm gonna promise this video is gonna be much quicker than the last one, so we're gonna get right into it. If you notice here, the formula for the volume is the base times the height. Now, what we're gonna do is we have to identify what is the base. Notice how this is B? It is capital, all right? So it's capital, so this is the area. We need to find the area of the base. Now, how do we figure out which side is the base? I'm going to be honest, for a rectangular prism, it's whatever side is on the floor or whatever side is the top. You can do it that way. All right, so look at this. This will be the base. We need to find the area of that base. And if we take that base, that this base, which is this big, right, and then we multiply it by the height. Now, the height always has to be perpendicular to the base, okay, and they will be for all of your examples. But essentially, find the area of the, the shape that's on the ground, and then you multiply it by however tall it is. That's called the height, and that'll give you the volume. It is that simple. Now, side note, what if we had this picture? Ooh, let me do a little math here. I'm going to do a little crazy math. What if this, what if this, uh, what do we got? What do we call this? A prism. What if this prism was on its side? I guess we could call this a side note. But anyways, what if it was turned like this? Oh, that looks, oh, oh, we'll turn it this way. Okay, Mr. Kelly, that is that is blowing my mind there. So then this becomes the base, right? It, it wasn't like that before. It was the flat, the largest rectangle was the base. But now this becomes the base and this becomes the height. And you know what's awesome? For rectangular prisms, it doesn't matter which side is the base. So if you want to use this side as the base, then the height would come this way. But you know, for most of us, what I would recommend doing is just looking at the side that is on the top or the bottom. We're going to call that the base. And we have to remember what our formulas are. So the area of the base, so we'll just say the area, and I'll put a little b here for the base, is going to equal, in this example, it's base times width here. So what do we got? Six times, I'll use my parentheses to show multiplication, five so in this example, the area of the base is 30 because it's six times five. I'm gonna put my units on there. So we'll say square inches. Remember, we're gonna use square inches when the distance is measured in, in inches. And we have to multiply that by the height. So volume equals the base times the height. So the base in this situation, we just figured that out. That's 30 square inches. The height, this is how tall it is, is four. And that's basically it, people. People, that's it. 30 times four is 120. Now here's the crazy thing. Do you remember when we did surface area and we had to come up with that unit which was a square unit? It's how many squares would fit. Remember if we draw the squares, that's what the unit is. For volume, what do you think it is when we're multiplying an inch times an inch times an inch? If you guessed cubic inches, we should pull a little three there instead of a two. But that's how we write our unit. And what does that mean exactly? That means if I were to take a one inch by one inch cube that was one inches deep, it's like a little, uh, what do you get, a little cube here. It's basically an ice cube or whatever. If they were an inch wide, I could put 120 of those little cubes into this box because remember, we're measuring how much space an object takes up. So that's how many little cubes, inch cubes, cubic inches. Uh, it does not mean that you take uh, 120 and then raise it to the third power. That cube is on the inches. It's not on the number itself. But that's it. How easy is that? That is easy peasy, lemon squishy. Let's go to our example that you can try by yourself. Go ahead and do this one, and then we'll move on. Go ahead and pause the video right here. Pause it. Do this problem. And then uh, when you come back here, we'll check it. Okay, so you're back. And this is what I did. Look at this. Volume equals base times height. I said the base will be this uh, this shape right here, this rectangle. So it would be 18 times 2, right? So 18 times 2 is 36 square inches. Got to multiply that by the height, which is 10 inches. Remember, the height has to be uh, perpendicular. By, by the way, what does perpendicular mean? It means it goes straight up 
90 degree angle right there. So that's the height, that's the base, multiply them, we get 360 cubic inches. Now, I'm gonna play the what if game, because there's a kid out there that did this. What if, what if you tipped this up and it was standing tall, you know, kind of like, it looked like this, and it was taller, right? I'm a great drawer. But that means this would be the base, and then this would be the height. So what would we get if we did it that way? So we'd have to find the area of the base and then multiply by the height. The area of the base would be 20 times the height, which is 18. So the volume would equal area of the base times the height, which would be 20 times 18. Guess what? We still get our 300. That's 360. And then we put cubic inches. So it really doesn't matter for rectangular prisms. It doesn't matter. But guess what for the cylinder? Also easy. Also, same formula. Volume equals the base times the height. Because it's the same idea, right? I mean, we had a prism. It's like you find the bottom of it and you multiply it by the height. It's the same idea with a cylinder. Remember, a cylinder is like a can of soup here. We have circles on the base here. We just have to find the area of the base. Now, for a cylinder, we just have to remember, cherry pies are delicious and apple pies are too. Apple pies are too. That is the formula for the area of a circle. All right, so we need to use that and then times the height. So step one, find the area of the base. So the base equals the area of the circle, which equals pi r squared. We learned that in section one. So 3.14 is pi, I'll put it in parentheses because I love my parentheses, times the radius, go up here, take a gander, make sure they're not giving you the diameter. This isn't, it's the radius, five, so then we just have to figure out 5 squared. 5 squared is 25. It is not 10. It is not 10. So 3.14 times 5 squared. That's going to work out to 78.5. 78.5 if you work that out. And what are we working in here? Centimeters? Okay. And if we're doing area, then we should have square centimeters. That will be our unit right there. So the area of the base is 78.5. Oh, that is an ugly eight square centimeters. And we need to multiply that times the height. So volume equals base, big old base times height. We figured out the volume of the base is 78.5. We need to multiply that times the height, which is 10. Easy peasy, I can multiply by 10. You just move that decimal. So the volume here is going to equal 785. Now what's our unit? We have square centimeters and we're going to multiply by 10 centimeters. So that's going to give us cubic centimeters. Square centimeters times one more centimeter is cubic centimeters. That is it. Now it's your turn to try two for yourself. Do each one of these. Here's a hint. One of them has a diameter, not a radius. Good luck. Try these. Pause the video. Go. All right, here we go. I got the answers right behind this gray shade. Let's check it out. Number four, the volume equals base times height. Let's look at this red right here. Volume equals base times height. I figured out the base up here. I figured out the base. So the base is the area of the circle. You like how I did that, huh? Pi r squared, figured out 28, 26. That goes right here for the area of the base. And then the height of it. This is a soup can that's been, uh, you know, tipped over. So. The base, you have to make sure, is the circle. The height of it is the 4, and then we get 113.04. And then here was the tricky part. They give you the diameter. So the volume of the cylinder equals the base times height. So the area of the base is the area of the circle, which equals pi r squared. Pi is 3.14, and the radius is 4. That gives us a base of 50.24 times the height of 40 gives us 2009.6. You know what? That was it. This might be my shortest video of all time. And you, oh, gotta get the beginning. You, you have finished it. So good luck to you. Make sure you check your answers. This is Mr. Kelly. Remember, it is nice to be important, but more important to be nice. See ya.